All right, welcome everyone. My name is Thijs Rauman. I'm a professor in information science at Cornell Tech, um, working particularly in computational fabrication, but in the past I've been working on like different haptic technologies for uh, visually impaired users. And right now I have the pleasure of working together with uh, Ricky on uh, accessibility technology uh, on a project that he will be uh, presenting much more about. Ricky, you wanna share who you are? Sure. Uh, thank you for the short introduction, uh, Thais. So my name is Ricky Gonzalez, and I'm a PhD candidate working with Professor Shiri Asenkot and Thais on accessibility. And in particular, we, in our demo, we are working for people with visual impairments. And so my research uh, lies in the intersection of AI and accessibility, and more specifically, uh, trying to create tools that provide intelligent access to visual information. That's great. So let's let's have a quick look at the demo of the application that you want to uh, that we want to be showing in this uh, seminar. Sure. So let me, as usual, need to share my screen in Zoom. I took a photo of a very nice article shared by our folks at ArchiveX. Um, and so in, in this photo, we have the example of someone trying to look for some graphical information. And in here, we have a figure that explains to other researchers how to make figures accessible. And we can see that the application describes the, this image as a stack bar chart uh, used to filter data on the right side with different textures and colors to represent information. So then we kind of ask the application to explain the chart values and the point of the chart. And then it's able to give a general idea of what is going on in the chart. So it mentions that the bar chart has these distinct patterns and colors. So the patterns are helpful for people that are uh, colorblind. That's, that's an important point of the figure. And then it also describes some of the values in the, in the figure. So are there, are there specific types of tasks that work ex exceptionally well with this uh, system and maybe things that don't work so well? And uh, how have you gone about exploring this and how could you further accommodate the challenging tasks that you have in mind? So I really like that question that you just asked. Um, actually, uh, we were testing it with some images about grocery shelf stores. Um, and uh, in this image, we can imagine a person trying to shop around. So they're at an aisle looking for a specific baking product. And then in here, you can see you know, we get a general idea of what the items are there, but this first description is too general. So I guess that would be one, one, one issue here. It doesn't give a good idea of what is actually there. So the user has to dig in deeper. And then, so here we can see that our, our user is interested in specifically knowing about cupcakes and the person just wants to know like on which side of the shelf is. And we can see that the that the application actually responds the wrong answer. It, it's saying that the cupcakes are in the middle when in fact, um, if we look at the image, which I'm actually going to zoom in for a moment here, we can see that the cupcakes are to the left side of the shelf. So, with things like position, things like position, it's not very good at identifying those kinds of things. And yeah, we're also running this demo to learn more about what things they are bad. I was actually wondering about that. I mean, you are a researcher, you're not just a developer of applications. So you built this really cool application uh, I think this is already very useful as is. Um, but what are the type of questions that you're trying to answer by building this technology and by having you know other people try this out? Yeah, so so 
So my, my research actually first started with creating a, an application very similar to, to seeing AI. Fun fact, actually, this application, I developed it before the newer version of seeing AI. But it actually also looks very similar to seeing AI again uh, by, by pure accident. Um, and so basically in this first uh, iteration of the study that I did in the past, uh, where I made an application that works similarly to seeing AI, our goal was to understand, okay, we have these tools that they have been deployed for almost a decade and blind and low vision people have been using them, but uh, we have no like scientific or like public knowledge, like a good understanding of how blind and low vision people are using these applications. We, we kind of know, you know, some of the most important things like trying to read text or, you know, identifying colors, but um, my research tries to explore now, okay, in more detail, okay, what are the different situations where blind and low vision people are actually using these applications and how well have they worked out in these situations? And so my research now is trying to use more advanced AI to see what new things is AI enabling people to be able to do. And in the long run, my, my goal is to create methods through which blind and low vision people can communicate better with the AI to serve those needs. So to give some quick examples, um, there's, a, there's some recent research that is looking into helping blind and low vision people be able to understand more about their cooking environment and so the AI can tell them things like, hey, you are missing, you didn't finish cutting this veg veggie or you, you, you put this, this liquid to the side and you forgot to use it in your sauce. So it, it sounds nuanced, but for, but for blind and low vision people, this is actually super useful so that they don't uh, miss some ingredient for their nice recipe that they're preparing or to not forget some key ingredient when they're preparing a nice, you know, fried rice or something like that. I was wondering if this might also like the, under the, the insights that you're gathering here, if they would also trans transition to other forms of disabilities, like for example, somebody who's deaf or has other um, constraints on their, on their perception of the world around them. So, so I think I'll, I'll latch on to the word that you just said, um, constrained. I think that that's the key to all of this. Because right now, what we're trying to do with AI, uh, at least for the past few years, is we uh, researchers are trying to flatten everything into, into text. But in reality, we are realizing that we need more sensing uh, modalities to be able to take action like it's a combination of having this language processing ability but also having this ability to perceive the world in precise ways and so by doing my research i am i am also generating long knowledge on like okay how can we do more sensing in constrained situations how can we make sense of the world with maybe not the perfect amount of data or maybe the data is a little bit corrupt um and 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 in this way this not only enables other people with different this um you know abilities but also um how can we how can we make technology in general for everyone else work well in difficult situations yeah, I think that that is great. And I think indeed, like in general, like a lot of the, the work that you do would transition also beyond people with specific disabilities, right? Like it could be relevant for anyone to make sense of the world around us or to get context on um, on, on the things we see around us. Yeah, that makes sense. 
I was I was I was wondering like um, you've been now exper experimenting with like you know different models in AI and um, and you have like some things that don't work some things that don't work. Do you have recommendations for researchers in AI research who are developing like new architectures or new types of models, um, how they can better support like accessibility or maybe more specifically the type of features that you're working on? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I would say that the so the best way to make these tools work better for blind and low vision people would be to start working more with them, start uh, learning more about them, and also start collecting more data about how they're using um, these tools. So that's why I'm doing the work that I'm doing. I'm trying to generate these data sets so that we know um, how people interact with these tools and then prepare these tools for their use cases in particular, because blind and low vision people have very different uh, visual abilities and also cognitive abilities. They are much better at, you know, getting more out of little amount of information. So the AI, for example, AI doesn't need to be as overly verbose. Many times, they just want some very precise information. That's why screen reader users um, speed up uh, the speech of, of screen readers because they don't want they they are quick. They don't want to waste time. They just want to use things, um, uh, get what they want quickly, and then move on to the next task. Of course, some some of them might, you know, be more paused, um, but. Each one has different levels of abilities, and there are many blind and low vision people that can contribute a lot to make these models work better for everyone. If people are uh, trying out your application or they have suggestions or different types of features, uh, how can they get involved in your research? How can they kind of connect with you to uh, you know, help help build better tools in the future? Thank you for that question, Thais. So the best way to um, try out our application, um, there are two ways actually. So the first one, just sign up for the forum and you'll receive an invitation to sign up to have access to the application. I will say uh, it's only available uh, uh, on iOS. So that's something to note. And then the second way to get access to it is you can just reach out to me directly on reg258 at cornell.edu. And we want you to test out the application, throw any random situation that you want to throw at it, any questions. And yeah, we want to find out what the what this tool is bad at so that we can proactively do something about it. All right, challenge accepted. Thank you so much. <laughs>